Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the McGonagall Boxing Podcast. So I just want to touch base um, on Craig Richards and um, uh, Joshua Boatze on Saturday night. Bloody hell, what a fight. What a brilliant fight. Credit to both men, they really put it on the line. And uh, I tell you what, Craig Richards is you know has got more heart and more balls than I gave him credit for. I mean I knew he was tough, I knew his game, but Jesus can he take a punch. And it looked like he was out, didn't he? I mean round four, round five, and I believe it was round seven. I thought, right, he's gone now. He's gone, he's on the ropes. But he came firing back or he held on and used experience. He managed to just avoid, get out of the way, hold and tie Boatzi out. Boatzi just couldn't finish him off, could he? Um, I was nearly right. I was very nearly right. He nearly had him out there. Um, round five, I thought, here we go. He's got him buzzed. He's got out of Richards hurt multiple times. But Jesus, Richards is tough. And credit, you know, I think he had a huge round eight. Um, you know, where he, you know, caught Boatzi. I thought, bloody hell, is Boatzi, you know, staggering here? But Boatzi came firing back. But there were a lot of questions answered and a lot of questions raised it was a bizarre kind of fight wasn't it because Boatsy impressed me in stages and in other stages I thought god he's he's not ready he's not ready for Bivol Bertabiev and he might not be ready for Callum Johnson he might not be ready for even Anthony Yard because I think what was seen is Craig Richards is not a hard puncher I mean like Against Bivol, I mean, he barely bloody, you know, shook Bivol. Um, I mean, it was a sloppy Bivol performance, and he won comfortably enough at probably sea level compared to the Bivol that rocked up against Canelo, for instance. And I thought Craig Richards has not got punching power, but I mean, to his credit, he was really trying to throw against. Um, you know, Boatsy late on, and you know, he buzzed him. So, I'm thinking, God, if Yard, what happens if Yard does that to him? Um, and you know, Boatsy's stamina is it reminds me a lot of Joshua. I know he's in on Joshua's management, isn't he? Under Matt, Joshua's management, I believe he's 286 management. Um, in the mannerisms, the way he talks, his accent, everything about Boatsy, he's like a mini Joshua. And even his fighting style, it's aggressive, it's explosive. I think he's a bit more versatile than Joshua. I think he's a better boxer than Joshua. But heavily muscled, aggressive, good to pop on his punches, good confidence, good aura about him, the way he owns the ring. But a bit like Joshua, he's got. I think he's got a standard issue. I think he's, he's very muscular, and I think that's not always a good thing because he looked tired. And don't get me wrong, I know he hasn't done full 12 rounds before. And certainly he has never fought anyone as tough as, as Richards. But he looked gassed at times. And I thought, bloody hell. You know, if this is Bivol now, if this is Bertie, if they're going to take advantage of that, and they're not going to let him off, they're going to keep on him. Bivol is going to keep hounding and hounding. And I think he'd stop Boatsy about seven or eight, a totally gassed out Boatzi, a bit like Canelo was gassed out, I think exactly the same thing will happen to Boatzi, but I don't think Boatzi's got the street smarts, um, or the endurance, or the toughness of Canelo right now, and I think Bivol would stop him, I really do, after seeing that performance, um, I mean Yard now is a 50-50, Yard's probably looking at it thinking, look, I could beat this guy, don't get me wrong, he could hit me, but if I catch him and put the pressure on him, I could wear him out and get him out of there, so... You know what I mean? It was an impressive performance. And Virgil Hunter's a brilliant coach. I've got to respect him. And some lovely jabs from Boatsy at times. Some lovely body work as well. I mean, there were rounds there where Boatsy looked world class. And it was rounds where you thought, my God, he's still he, he's still European level here. It was a bizarre performance. So you've got to probably give it a B-. minus. But I still scored it 9-3. I, I mean, I'm not quite as one-sided as Bellew. But I, I, I'm not far off. I think Boatsy dominated the early rounds. And then Richard's tough game started to find his confidence, his range. I think he realised, hang on, I've taken the worst Boatsy can throw at me. I'm still here. And then he started to grow in confidence. And he actually started to hold his ground more, didn't he? Um, and he survived some nervy moments. 
Uh, I think he gained confidence when he rocked Boatsy in round eight. I think he regret not coming out strong in round nine. I thought, here we go, he's going to put it on him, see what he can do. But he said he wanted to hold back, not punch himself out. He thought, you know, Boatsy could still be dangerous. I think he's going to regret not going going f full throttle at him. I think he got he had windows of opportunity there. But um, brilliant fight, brilliant fight. I had it nine three. I think Boatsy won the last round. Um, but you know they even ended toe to toe, didn't they? I mean they were both up for that. They both knew it meant mandatory position for Bivol's title, so that's why they went at it. Richards for now, obviously he's got to do a little bit of rebuilding. But a 32 and on that performance, he can still come again. But I mean that's a tough war. That's going to take take out both fighters. I mean I wouldn't want to see Boatsy fight for at least four or five months after that. Same with Richards, and I'd like Richards just to have. You know, after them back to back to back tough fights, like a European level fight, just to ease his confidence back. But hopefully, you know, Hearn gives him another shot because that was a brilliant fight. I'd like to see, you know, Richard on his own again. And Boatsy, I can't wait. He's never in a dull fight. Boatsy, very entertaining fighter. A lot of respect for him. He conducts himself with class. They both do after the fight. Huge respect to both men. I wish I'd gone now. I nearly went to the O2. Decent crowd, but, you know, I've got to say, Adam Smith's right. I mean, that his own and Eddie Hearn, as good a promoter as he is, is not, let's not take anything away from Hearn, he's being found out a little bit, hasn't he? I think you realise that what made him great for the last four or five years was him and Sky Sports. A bit like Lennon and McCartney. You take one from the other, and I think you're seeing chinks because the O2 is, what, 5,000 people there? And a 20,000 arena? And that was a big fight. So I think Boatsy's still got a lot to lot to do to become a household name. I think he's still got to, um, you know, um, get the public's imagination, so to speak. But I think, you know, eventually fighters are going to be, uh, you know, all right, Hearn, what's the deal here? Why are we not sending out the stadiums? Because that's going to hit their financial pocket, isn't it, really? So... I mean, it's interesting times for Hearn. You know, interviews he's kind of come out quite defiant and ballsy, but um, I don't know. I don't know. He, you know what I mean? He's yeah. It's interesting times. I'm not saying he's he's under the cosh here, but you know, designer put a lot of money in him. They expect results, but it will take. I still think it'll take another year to really see the full potential of designer. They're still building. I think they need to get on a TV platform. I don't think a phone app is going to cut it. I don't, I don't believe her and he's saying that's the future. It's not the future. I think TV still is king. Um, and I think he's overestimated the, the power of an app. Because it's still, you know, not as far reaching as, as a TV channel. Um, that's a fact. But, uh, no. But anyway, back to the fight. I mean, yeah. Very exciting times. I, if I was Boatsy, I wouldn't go straight into a, ma a position for, with Bivol. I'd have a, 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 another fight, maybe against a Callum Johnson. The Yard's the perfect fight, isn't it? That's the perfect bridge to then fight Bivol. What he can't do is he can't take a step back, of course. He can't fight, you know, his last couple of oppositions, Boatsy. You know, I don't want to see him fight in a, in a four-round KO job anymore. You know, that's... After fighting Richards, that's his... Uh, that's his calling now, isn't it? That's his level. You know, what's he, 16 and 0 now, Boatsy? Um, and he's gone the distance now, so he's got that experience. Um, you know, and he can really punch. Um, you know, and he, he's shown that he can, 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 can endure as well. It's not always about him. He can he can take a punch. But, um, you know, I don't want to go back to Balotniks or, you know, Kalic or Ryan Ford. He's got to move on now, or DeSantis. He's got to move on. You know, Callum Smith would be ideal. I don't think Callum Smith will take that fight, though. I think he's holding out for a world title shot. So, Callum Johnson would be game for that. I know they've been going back and forth on social media. Yard been going back on social media. I know Frank Warren's come out and said, let's make it happen. You know, and then go for Bivol. Then go for Berg TF. I wouldn't want to see Boatsy fight for another 12 months. I think he's got a lot to work on in terms of pacing himself, cardio, and defence. Because he did get hit a lot against Richards. 
You're just lucky that Richards hasn't really got the punching power of Bivol or certainly Bergtiev or even Yard. So he's got to shore up the, that defence. But like I say, he's got to be more consistent round after round after round. Watch Mayweather. Look at the greats. Canelo. Round after round after round. They don't let up. They're just as good in the first round, sixth round, seventh round. They're not great in one round, poor in the other. Great in one round, poor. Got to be more consistent from Boatsy. But that's why 16 fights, he'll grow with that. He'll develop. He's 29. He's, he's still not in his peak, I don't think. Um, so, you know, it's not a race, it's not a sprint, he'll get there, but uh, don't rush it, 12 months, then I'd like to see him fight before Boatsy, but um, no, huge respect, um, both credit, credit both men, Richards I think can come again as well, I think on that performance he can certainly get himself back in world contention, but obviously I'd like to say one off two easy fights to rebuild himself, but what a fight, what a night, not fight of the year, but I'll tell you what, maybe British fight of the year, I mean, phew, not, you know, I'm sure domestically, uh, you know, it's gonna, that's going to take some beating. But on the world scene, of course, I'm not saying it was. But I'll tell you what, you know what I mean? I, 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 definitely my top, top ten at the moment. Brilliant, brilliant fight. Brilliant action. Create both men. But Boatsy's still got a lot to learn.